What's up, guys? Hey. Welcome to Patriot Garage. So we're introducing a brand new series. We are. The biggest question that we get on our YouTube channel is about our gear, isn't it? It definitely is. And I think we've done some pretty cool stuff when it comes to gear over the, far, the past few years, right? Yes, definitely. We're very lucky on all the gear that we get to use. <laughs> Now, we're going to start today with Sarah's 1500 Ram. Yes. Hemi. Dun, dun, dun. Here it is. The this is my baby. The Hemi. The Hemi. The yeah. Hemi. Yeah. What's up? Oh my God. Competition Orange 67. This thing's a Hemi. So, if you followed Patriot Games, you would have seen, well, look, it all kind of started when the kids started getting big. Right? Yeah. Sarah feeds them a lot, the kids get big, <laughs> and then what kind of happens is we're cruising around in 79 series Land Cruisers and all the rest of it and putting three kids in the back of that thing. And they are big. They were squished. So when we went up in Darnham Land, Sarah had a Ford Ranger at, at that time. Her and Mia travelled on that. And if you watch the series, these two had an absolute <laughs> ball. Way too much sugar. <laughs> the girls are in Patriot Camper's newest build, the PX2 Super Tourer. All you want to do from here, descend it. Just send it. Just send it, man. You just gotta send Tell it. Tell mum to just send it. Just send it, man. But mom. put your window up because you get spray with sand. Send it, go. Send it, send it, send it. Send it, mum, send it. There you go, babe, well done. Good good job. Good driving, Mia. I'm pretty advanced at this sort of stuff. That's one for the girls. Go, girl. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, no, good on you. Good drive. Awesome. Oh. It's actually really pretty. Yeah, it is. These crocodiles aren't very pretty. They look cool. Sarah didn't like having the little baby out of the fleet. So then, uh, when was it? Actually, it was the same trip I built my Ram, my 2500. Yeah, yeah. And Maddie was driving that um, up in that Arnhem Land trip and you developed a bit of a passion for a Ram. The love, yeah, all that space. I can put 6.7 tonne on the hitch of this thing. I've rounded up seven of my best and in only a couple of weeks, we created the Super Ram. And now we're about to prove it in some of Australia's harshest off-road terrain. Now we got traction, dude. Heaps of traction. Now I'm just ploughing the edge of that bank. So we kind of thought the 2500 might have been a bit big for her and the big Cummins, she didn't really need it for running around and picking the kids up. And that's the thing, I do, I need it as a daily. So, this little, little. Little. It's the little ram. It's the baby ram, the 1500, <laughs> but it is still a big bit of kit now. You do daily drive this. I do. Every day. Every single day. If you live on the Gold Coast or you're around the Gold Coast, you'll see Sarah between 7.30 in the morning at 8 o'clock and probably 3 o'clock and 3.30 in the afternoon on the school run with all the kids mm -hmm. in the back. Mm -hmm. You'll see it at every shopping centre. Yep. Doing down the at Pacific Fair, at Coles, yep. all the rest of it. So what would you say to all of the girls out there and even the guys that think a 1500 Ram is too big as a daily driver? Well, I don't, I don't really think it is. It fits into all the car parks. I'm really not good at going in forward into a car park, but you can reverse it into pretty much anything. Um, it's got really good visual around it and it's got the space for the kids. So, um, and, and, and you know what the best part about it is? What? You look like such a badass driver. And I do kind of like that too. We got a bit, I'm going <laughs> to let you in on a little secret. There's something happening with the Mega 6 right now, which we're going to have another drag race. Yeah. And I reckon, well, actually, Simpson does it. Yeah. We drag race the black truck against this. Who won? How's that supercharged Hemi? You always going, babe? Yeah, she's going good. You want to see what that thing can really do? Hit it. Oh, yes. She's going. Oh. Oh. 
Guys, I hear me. Young's good. Yeah, baby. Yeah, what? Well, yeah, told me a new one. But anyway, <laughs> we won't talk about that right now. Here's what we're gonna do today. Now, for all the Patriot Garage series. I'm going to run you through the reasons why we put the gear on mm -hmm. uh, that we do, all of the big builds, yep. uh, the peak or staff, what we're towing. So I'll get into all the tech stuff. Mm -hmm. All the bits that just make it easier when we're touring. So let's get into it. Uh, the 1500 Ram Super Tourer. Enjoy, guys. All new episodes of Patriot Games are streaming now on YouTube. To celebrate, we're giving our subscribers the chance to win this Get Lost package worth over $170,000, which will transform your new daily driver into a fully kitted out campsite on demand. We've taken an all new Isuzu D-Max with a three litre turbo diesel engine and 3.5 tonne towing and given it the Patriot Games treatment equipping it with more power for off-the-grid adventures, more vision with a suite of LED lighting, more connection with an impressive radio platform, more carrying capacity with a peak or tray. Pair that with the Patriot Campus X1N, your complete base camp station with the best off-road towing technology, plenty of storage, a fully equipped camping kitchen and more. Plus, receive a brand new Polaris Ranger 150 and loads of camping gear and accessories so you can get lost in style. Entries close June 30, 2021. Enter online now at patriotgames.tv. Now here's the point where a lot of viewers are going to be pretty disappointed that Sarah is gone. The tech side of the trucks, I'm going to run you through and the toys. You'll see her pop in and out the series when we um, when we showcase the gear that she uses. But I'm really, I'm going to start with the why. Why did we go to a 1500 Ram? Why did I choose a 1500 Ram for my wife? Now, Ford Ranger that you saw her driving in Arnhem Land, that was a big part of R&D uh, for Patriot Campers right here. So we were just at the stage that we were developing uh, the Ford Ranger Super Tourer. We wanted to give it a, a good shakedown, so Sarah took it on that trip. Patriot campers are taking on the Northern Territory. They're headed to a crossing into Arnhem Land, and Justin's gotten word that it might be covered in water and uncrossable. This is absolutely epic, and they have had some rain up here on the floodplain. All right, baby, you in low range? I'm in low range. You got your diff lock on? I have got the diff lock on. How's that feeling, babe? Yeah, good. It's not even high, babe. Not too bad at all. As we said, the kids were starting to get a bit bigger. It wasn't really fair to put all the three of them in the back of the truck. And Sarah wanted to start driving in the convoy uh, with the crew. Actually, at the time, she had a 200 series Land Cruiser and she's had that for, I don't know, two or three years. Now, the size of the car for her um, was never going to really be a big deal. You know, coming out of a 200, they're very, very similar dimensionally to a 200. So your width and your length, although the shape of the truck makes them appear to be a lot bigger um, than they actually are. The 1500 is a very, very similar size. I was just getting into the 2500 Rams from my past experience in, in America and having a Julie over in the States. And she was just in love with the 2500. She wanted one so bad, but I kind of thought with the 1500, a little bit smaller, the bonnet's a little bit lower, so you got a better seating position from the top. And me and Mia uh, went and picked up the 1500 Ram. Congratulations. Hemi, I see the real boss was here today. The, the, big, the big boss is here today. Me and Mia kind of organised up a gift for you. <laughs> Come on, keep coming, keep coming. No. Are you ready? No way. Did you see it? No Hit the lights, man. Oh my god. Surprise. <laughs> no. You got your own ram. 
And then we did what we did and we got completely carried away and turned this into what I consider, at the time anyway, the most badass 1500 Ram in the country. <laughs> Now it's no joke when I said before that Sarah dailies this every day. So this car is at home every day, it goes to school every day, it goes to the shopping centre. Um, she goes absolutely everywhere with it and she drives it as her daily driver. That being said, we really didn't go over the top with tyre size and big lift and lockers and all the rest of it because the more we get to use this truck and the more trips it goes on, these things are so capable and they are the only option to a 200 series uh, converted truck. And that's really, that's attacking the white elephant in the room because that's what these things really compete against. You go and buy a 200 series, you cut the back off it, like we've done you know, on hundreds of trucks now. I love you like la 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 la. Factory warranty's gone. You do run into some sort of issues. When you go down builds that big, you'll have uh, little bits and pieces. These things come directly out of the factory. Let's get down the back. We'll start with the biggest modification first, and then we'll walk all the way around, and we'll finish with the baddest uh, upgrade, the supercharger on the front, which you all know if you've watched the build series. Let's get down there and get into it. <laughs> Now the biggest modification uh, that you're going to notice on the 1500 Ram, and really it's the same as all of our Supertourers, what makes a Supertourer is the P-Core bed, the P-Core tray. Now when you're talking the 1500 Ram, you're running about an 800 kilo payload on the back. And if I had to be honest, in, in standard uh, form, that's probably a little bit of a downfall when it comes to the 1500 Ram, but it's completely relevant uh, to what you're doing with it. The trade-off for that 800 kilo uh, payload, four and a half tonne towing capacity out of the box on these things is unbelievable, and especially for someone like me who's always carrying a lot of gear. Now, coming back to the tray, it's a bit of a trade-off with the tray. They really kind of equalise themselves out when it comes to weight. A factory tub, we've weighed them here, I think from memory is about 210 kilos. This one here, as you see it, the tray only and not the boxes, will come in somewhere around 175 kilos. So you do gain about 30 odd kilos of uh, payload there. But the big advantage is you get all of the storage built in. Uh, you've got a water tank built in there, the rear drawers, the central locking, which I'm gonna run you through now. Now, every single PCOR tray is developed specifically for the vehicle that it goes on, really following the contours of the vehicle uh, that it's fitting. So that is, that's probably aesthetically the biggest standout when it comes to a P-Core tray. Another thing you'll notice at the back, and again, it comes to styling, you know, when you're dealing with $100,000 trucks, or we see some Land Cruiser builds now, you know, getting into the two and even $300,000 um, sort of vicinity. It is really important, the aesthetics, let's be honest, when you're gonna build a touring truck, you just want it to look as badass as possible. Uh, the wedge tail design that we've got on the back, the taper on the back, when you go a full size canopy or you go twin canopies on a P-Core tray, uh, we're really big fans of the spare tires staying on the bed uh, and for two really good reasons. You keep the weight distribution inside the realms of the bed. You'll see a lot of canopies getting around with two spare tires hanging over the back and depending on the vehicle, i.e. 79 series, which love to pick the front wheels up, um, not really a, a good thing or an advantage, but the biggest one for me is we're always towing. So if you protrude past the end of the tray and you hang spare wheels off the back of your canopy or your tray, um, you're really limiting that articulation or the turning circle of whatever you're gonna be towing. So there's a really big consideration. We've taken that all into account with all of our designs of the accessories that we fit on top. 
say three quarter canopies or half canopies, they'll always just finish within the proximity of the tray so you can get those spare tyres uh, to mount directly on the tray and take that loading capacity, uh, like I said. A big advantage of all the PCOR um, systems and same with the camper trailers that we produce, uh, they're all aluminium. The only structural part is the main stringers. The main stringers are manufactured in uh, steel for that added strength, but everything else is aluminium, so non-corrosive, uh, powder coated. We only offer them in black. A lot of customers will paint toolboxes or the front quarter to match um, the colour of their car, but that's really, that's the Patriot style, you know, black with the colour, um, and we tie that in with the bonnets and the decals that we'll get into um, a little bit later on. When you're touring, it's all about uh, storage and having a location to keep everything uh, as simple as possible that you know where everything is. And we try and build as much storage as we can in vehicle specific, uh, depending on, you know, taking into consideration the aesthetics, the dimensions of the tray as to how much storage we can fit in. Um, the rear quarters in every single PCOR tray um, will usually house uh, the water pump. There's an electric water pump underneath here for your 75, actually I think they're 80 litres now, uh, poly tank on board and central locking uh, mechanisms inside every box. So obviously when you lock and unlock your car, everything unlocks and locks with it. Whilst we're on this side, I'll talk about the configuration that Sarah's got on the tray um, and we'll move our way around. So she's got a peak or half canopy on her tray and this is to give her the storage for groceries, um, you know, the kids school bags or anything else that she may need. We've got twin spares on the back and then this uh, part of the deck at the back, you can see that we've got uh, aircraft tracking in here and this houses all sorts of different accessories. So you probably would have seen if you watched um, the uh, X3 launch video, we had the kids super jet on the back. So they're, they're pole skates. So this is a standard uh, PCOR half canopy. This one here doesn't have the electrical module fitted, uh, but you can option an electrical package in here which gives you a Red Arc, uh, BMS 1230, uh, inverter, USBs, power and all the rest of it. Because Sarah is always towing uh, when we go on the trips, she's got all of that capacity in the trailer, so we didn't deem it necessary um, for her. So you can see up here just how much storage that you've got. If you picture a kid's school bag, uh, the, ki the three kids' school bag will fit in this side and uh, obviously groceries as well. She'll bang all of that on this side and then she's got a whole heap of storage on the other side as well. Um, there's a big storage drawer uh, that comes as standard and all the peak or canopies. You can actually see some kids' school books here. So this kind of proves the concept. Let's see what else she's got in here. She's got a rag. Uh, she's got a brand new air deflator, which I just got under warranty. Some Patriot thongs, I don't know, check them out, you might be interested in that. Um, so that's the standard drawer. And another feature that we don't talk about a lot when it comes to the PCOR canopies, this is something up here that I'm extremely proud of. Um, think about camping chairs. When you're touring in your car on your own, where do you put a camping chair? They are the biggest pain in the ass thing to carry when it comes to your standard chairs. So up here, we developed this little system years and years ago. You can lock that side off and obviously use that as storage. If you pull this little tab down here, three camping uh, chairs, pretty much any brand, uh, will fit in there perfectly. And then she's just got an interior light switch here which works off uh, plungers as well. Up on the headboard on this side here, um, we've got lights on the side. So again, when it comes to a campsite, uh, when you're looking for a campsite or even at night, you know, when she's loading up groceries at night or gets home at night, you know, she's on the driveway, um, flick them on and off and here is your water filler, typical of most uh, PCOR trays that you'll have your water filler in the side which is coupled up to that uh, water tank like I said. Let's move around the back. When it comes to the rear of the PCOR trays, uh, fundamentally every model PCOR tray has got the same rear setup. They've got the same tail lights, a massive pull-out drawer, which again, depending on uh, the dimensions of the tray that's fitted to your vehicle, this may vary. Uh, the one thing that will rem uh, remain constant will be the height. So you'll notice PCOR trays do sit a little bit taller than your conventional trays. 
uh, and that's to ensure that we can get all of the gear underneath. So we get the water tanks underneath, you get a lot more storage in the rear quarters and a massive rear drawer uh, for loading up. Look, everybody's different. You'll load up whatever you want to load. Um, obviously, you've got central locking as well. And you'll also notice Sarah's got the PCOR uh, number plates. More on the back, winch cradles. So winch cradles, we commercialised the winch cradle again back in about 2015. We weren't the first people to put a rear winch on a truck, but we were definitely the first ones to commercialise them and make them a, a, a real uh, standard product um, for off-roading. Now for us always towing and um, the situations that we get into, a rear winch, look, you're not going to use it very often. You're not going to use it very often at all. But I can tell you right now in the right situation when you're travelling on your own or you get put in that position that you need to winch backwards, it will come in handy. Uh, standard ramp tow bar. Let's move around the other side. Probably the only other thing to touch on um, here while we're at the back, twin spares. If you've got the room for it, the capacity for it, two spares, definitely the go. It depends on the destination, depends on where you're going. Mounted on peak or rims. I'll talk about them a little bit later on. Identical toolbox to the other side uh, that you saw here. Uh, up on this side, you'll see the fuel filler. Um, in this truck, we have got standard there 100 litres. I think from memory, maybe go back to the old video, we're running about 160 litres uh, of fuel on board this one. I could be wrong there in a long range tank. Now in this side uh, of the canopy, again for Sarah, for what she's using it for, we've left this area completely empty for her load in whatever she wants. Uh, this is the back of that storage shelf that you saw on the other side. You can use for whatever you like or the camp chair option. Uh, but typically speaking, we run an option and Sarah will run when we go out touring. A drop down fridge slide here and another uh, Dometic 65 litre will actually fit in here. This is what this was designed for. Another big feature of the Pecor canopies here, you can see this dust filter. What that design does, it allows fresh air to be channeled straight inside the canopy and create a pressurised system. You've got massive seals, automotive seals on here as well, um, and that'll help pressurise and keep the dust out. Probably worthwhile noting the rear quarters, we do get asked this a lot, um, the rear quarters don't have any IP rating. Um, they are waterproof. If they are sunken, if you drive this thing you know, through a gully or whatever, there's nothing you can do about it. You will get water in there. Don't put valuables in your rear quarters. It's really just that simple. I've actually missed a fundamental piece of this build and you'll need to get down here with me. We've got something that's pretty new to us. Uh, airbags have been around forever and we work with Airbag Man and typically speaking, we'll put a helper airbag underneath a, a factory spring. Um, in this 1500, we've put in a complete air replacement, which is fundamentally exactly the same as what we run on all of the camper trailers. So you get rid of the spring, you put in a roll sleeve airbag, it's got a piston at the bottom and the piston's tuned that you get a variable spring rate as the airbag goes up and down that piston. Unbelievable, the ride is absolutely amazing. Um, we've got an automated fill kit at the front, so we've got a gauge up there, which I'll show you in a minute, a couple of switches um, hooked up to an air compressor. So whenever we change the load dynamics, depending on what's on the tray or if we're towing or not, Sarah hits a couple of switches. And now after that six months, she knows exactly where she needs to be. If she's got an X1 hooked on the back, she'll go to 50 pounds. If she's unloaded, she'll run at 30 pounds. If she goes and puts the jet ski on the back, she'll go to like 40 pounds. So um, you, get, um, you get to know that. If something was to fail there with that automated system, we've got an override here. So there's a couple of valves here that we can uh, just pump the airbag straight up. We've been through on the 1500 now, I think about three or four different brands and different styles of shocks. Again, that comes back to all of the R&D that we do here. And the other thing is uh, worth mentioning is um, that the 1500 Ram has an independent front end. And um, we're really, really happy with the 1500 as a tourer and as a daily driver. And that's going to make a lot more sense when we get into the interior because the interior in this, this thing, I'll tell you right now, out of any vehicle that I've ever owned in my life, it's probably got the best factory interior um, that, that we've ever dealt with. And there's really only one modification we've made to it. So let's get in there and have a look. Now, getting into the interior. Um, we've got a product here that we've, um, we brought in a couple of years ago, Amp Research Side Steps. So you can see the side steps stay really well tucked away um, underneath the sills so you don't you get a lot more clearance um, when you're off-roading outside of you know the traditional kind of bolt-on side steps 
The ride height, it's only got about a one and a half inch lift, um, this truck. Again, getting back to keeping it like a sane build, I suppose. Something that Sarah Daly's with the 33 inch tire, um, you know, one and a half inch, slot one and three quarters, just under two inch lift in the side steps. Um, the accessibility um, for anybody, you know, the kids getting in and out of the car. Underneath the dash here uh, on this side, this is the uh, air system that I was telling you about. So you've got a digital gauge there. A couple of switches here. Uh, you can pump up or, or lower the air pressure. Disregard what I said before about what pressures because she's running around at about 47 pounds um, aside, which must be where she kind of likes it. You've got everything in this interior that you could possibly want. And I'll jump in the driver's seat. I'll get on the other side. I'll run you through the controls. And then just as importantly, if you're looking for a family touring truck, um, I'll jump in the back seat and I'll show you how much room the kids have got in the back. Put it in perspective, 79 series cruiser measures about 1800 wide. Uh, the Rams, the 1500 and 2500 is two meters wide. So you've got about an extra kind of 200 mil of cabin space. But the head height, the width of the seat. Um, look, let's get in there and, I, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Inside the Ram is where um, you just can't compete with any other touring vehicle. In Australia, the 2500 comes only with a bench seat. You can't get a centre console um, from ASV. Um, but the 1500 comes with this big centre console. You can see the driving position is just, you know, they're, they're perfect. Yeah, the bonnet is a lot more raked on a 1500, 2500 to get that Cummins in there. They've got a lot flatter bonnet, so you've got a lot better perspective um you know of viewing and that's really important you know sarah's not tall but you've got electric seats so you can lift the thing right up seats are heated as well which is i can tell you right now hands down that sarah's favorite feature the steering wheel is also heated um, you've got controls on the steering wheel for absolutely everything that you need pretty common in modern cars now uh, your volume and your track at the back and you can control all of that sort of stuff there's two variations that are available um, from ram trucks australia you can either buy an express or you can buy a laramie now the express uh, comes factory with a shorter rear cab so your rear seats are smaller but it's worthwhile noting the laramie the cab so from the firewall uh, to the rear firewall is identical to a 2500. So your interior space in a 15 and 2500 Laramie in the, the Ram Trucks Australia version, I know guys in the United States, you can get any option or any configuration that you want from Ram in the US. That's not the case here in Australia. The cabs are identical. Um, you've got obviously all the things that you would expect, uh, navigation, but look, there's, you know, I, I own a lot of vehicles now and I drive a lot of different vehicles through R&D and testing with the Supertourers. Intuitiveness, if that's a word, uh, the Uconnect system in the Ram is probably the best that I've ever used. Um, you've got uh, your CarPlay there from Apple, so if you plug a phone in, you've got all of your Apple apps and your nav and all the rest of it. But getting back to it, it's very, very simple to use. The navigation is amazing. Put it this way, when I'm in any other car and I want to navigate to somewhere, I'll use my iPhone. If I'm in one of the Rams with the Uconnect, I'll use the navigation. I think it's that much better. Sunroof comes standard in the Laramie as well. We put roof racks on top and we'll quickly touch on that while I'm, I'm here. So we've got a platform on top. Uh, when we're out traveling, typically we'll put swags and max tracks is really all we're carrying now because we have most of our gear set up that we don't have to load up uh, the roofs. Now, like I said before, there's only two modifications that we've done in the interior. Number one, XRS, what else? That is the only radio that this convoy will use right throughout Patriot Games. Uh, check out our XRS Connect videos if you don't know anything about them. Uh, Red Arc Tow Pro as well, standard for all of us. You've got a factory brake controller in the 1500 and the 2500 Ram. The factory brake controller, uh, in my opinion, is very inferior um, to the Red Arc system. Again, watch a video on the Red Arc Tow Pro system. It's under this small little uh, knob here and it's fully automated. Um, con uh, you can tell. She cleaned out all the stuff that she thought everybody was gonna see and uh, the stuff that they haven't. So the kids, uh, their learner's plates, they've been driving this car around. A pair of sunnies, let's see what else she's got in here. Cleaning wipes, obviously she knew this was coming up. Winch controllers, another pair of Oakleys, and girly stuff that we just, we don't even want to go there. Let's get in the back seat. Now in the back, uh, before I jump in, here's a feature that I don't think anybody, whether you're a soccer mum, a tradesman, or even just 
a general person using your car wouldn't like this. Full flat floor. And for me and my 2500, I don't do the school run during the week, Monday to Friday. That's how mine stays. Always have stuff in the back. And I have actually slept. I've taken my swag mattress out and slept across the back here a couple of times in my 2500. As I said, the cab, the back cab on the Laramie is exactly the same. So that is an awesome uh, feature before we get into it. Now that's in my driving position right now, right? So I adjusted the seat before I got back in. And to be honest with you, I drive kind of gangster, laid back, you know, legs out. That's, that's kind of how I drive, how I roll. So that seat's pretty much as far back as I think anyone would have it. And you can see the room in here. Obviously, you've got this little fold down here. For four people in here, four big blokes in here, you would not have a drama during a touring trip. And this is what I was saying. When you've got three younger kids, you know, pre-17 years old, that they still have to be in the back of the car with mum and dad, that is a massive consideration when you are buying a touring car because uh, three kids in the back of um, a, a small dual cab, um, it's not cool. I've been there multiple times. So that about wraps up the interior. Now for the exciting bit, let's pop the hood. The hood's up, we're getting there. Before we get into it, let's run through some other accessories that we've uh, developed and fitted. The big standout one is going to be the peak or bull bar. Um, look, guys, at this point in time, we're not going to put them into production. We're not a bull bar manufacturer. Um, there's plenty of companies in Australia that manufacture bull bars. This was something that the engineering team got all excited about when the Ram first arrived here in Australia. There was no uh, ADR complied uh, bull bar on the market. We developed this over about 12 months. I love the look of it. Um, we did do a hoopless variation, but like I said, unfortunately, uh, we're at this point in time, check back in with us uh, later on, um, we're not putting them into production, but you can see aesthetically, it just follows all the lines, suits the shapes, uh, massive hoops. So it really fits in with the PCOR uh, kind of branding. Um, X-ray lights, so I've recently been converted from HID to LED. I'm pretty much there now. Um, I think what they're getting out of the LEDs now and especially when it comes to lighting, X-ray are at the top of the game. Again, you would have seen it in other videos, but it's all about the optics that sit in front of the LED, and that's where X-ray excel over anything else that I've tried. And it's a brand that, you know, once if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Once you find something that you're passionate about and you love and a brand that you trust, um, you just kind of always stick with them. Um, that coupled with the 1200 mil light bar on the top, you can see that we've got pencil beams in the center and then we've got spreader beams on the outside. The amount of light this thing projects um, is awesome and that's all about safety. Front winch, we've got a 12,000 pound winch on this. Probably not big enough for this car to be honest with you when, we're, um, when we are coupled up with a trailer. We're fitting worn 16,000s on pretty much everything that we build now. Um, they, they are an amazing winch. These things have been fantastic for us. Uh, for your lighter kind of dual cabs and you're not towing, um, you know, a 9,000 or a 12,000 pound winch um, is definitely sufficient. I'm not saying it's not, but for us, um, it's big gear, a lot of weight. Um, we want to ensure that we're not going to be burning out winches, so we go with um, the 16,000 pounds. GME whip, so we only got the small whip on this. Again, try and keep everything underneath the height of the cab. Big consideration. Um, when you're building a touring car that you're going to be using as a daily driver, think about all those things. Whips are so easy to change out too, so we just run the little 600 mil, um, and that, that gives Sarah enough. Decals, standard Super Tourer decals, um, the black bonnet, the black stripe down the side, all fits in with the styling uh, of what we do. AEV Snorkel, so AEV, as far as I know, are the only company um, that produces snorkel for the Ram 1500 and 2500. Now let's get to the fun part. Ta-da! Now, when it comes to the 1500 Ram, when it comes to the Hemi, the power out of the factory is amazing. They're 291 kilowatts, I think, and about 550 newton meters of torque. So they've got tons of power. Now, I know what everyone's gonna say, and especially here in Australia, we have this stigma that if you're gonna build a four-wheel drive or you're gonna build a touring car, it has to be a diesel. And for what reason? I, I don't know. Just, it has to, you talk to anybody, it's gotta be a diesel. I oh, know it's petrol, it's no good for touring. Well, to be honest with you, I, I don't think that could be further from the truth, right? People are gonna talk about fuel consumption um, when it comes to diesel versus petrol on a touring car. And they're obviously gonna talk about reliability of a diesel. 
The truth is modern diesels are more complex than modern petrol engines. It's just that simple. You know, the electronics is just as fragile in a modern diesel uh, than it is in a modern petrol. Now, if you go back to, you know, pre-fuel injection, so mechanical injection days, I would completely agree with the theory that a diesel truck is gonna be better. But when it comes to modern cars, you know what? If you're gonna sink them and you gotta get them wet, everything relies on the electrical delivery to the engine to make the car run. And whether it's petrol or diesel, you're gonna have exactly the same problem. Fuel consumption too. So now with variable valve timing and also the smarts in ECUs now, say for example, the Hemi will drop four cylinders out when they're not required. So if you're sitting on the highway at 100 kilometres an hour and you're running very economical, it'll start dropping cylinders out. Rated fuel consumption out of the factory. So with the 1500 Hemi, it's 12.2 litres per 100, right? Toyota quote in the diesel 200 series, twin turbo, uh, twin turbo VDJ, 11.2 litres per 100. Now I've owned multiple 200 series Land Cruiser and I can tell you right now, they don't run at that. But even if you are to go off the factory figures, you're talking one litre per 100. So the difference is really negligible. We've thrown that theory right out the window though, because we've gone and bolted this thing straight on top of it, the Harrop Supercharger. Did the Hemi need a Harrop Supercharger? Hell no. Is it cool? Yeah. Does it make more power? Yeah. More torque? Definitely. Now we always go outside of the box when we're developing um, new vehicles and working with an Australian manufacturer like Harrop on the build of this was nothing short of amazing. What these guys are doing down there, the technology, um, that they put into all of the products, the design, the R&D, their racing heritage at, at Harrop. We were so excited to work with them and we're really excited to continue working with them in the future. I'll give you a little bit of, uh, a little bit of specification when it comes to the supercharger. The 5.7 Hemi is known as having glass pistons, right? So if you go and put too much boost into one of these things, you'll cause an issue. This kit, this setup that is now available from Harrop, anybody can buy one uh, for a 1500 gram in Australia or overseas, they're in the United States now as well. Um, this runs about four PSI, so it's a very limited amount of boost, but here's what it did to the car. We went from 180 kilowatts at the back wheels to 200, 250, 250, 260 kilowatts, I think it was at the back wheels. Um, the power increase was absolutely astronomical. Torque went from 410 newton meters to about 700 newton meters at four PSI. Now we have been talking internally. Everyone's starting to get a little bit excited. It's been a while since we built the car. Let's pull the motor out. Uh, let's put some pistons and rods in the thing and turn it up. Uh, high Torque here on the Gold Coast are doing a lot of development work with Harrop. Um, so that might happen in the near future, depending on what we decide to do when the new DT model is released, whether we get one of them or we continue the development um, with this one here. So to sum up that question, petrol versus diesel, um, really look at it, consider it. Petrol is available anywhere that diesel is available, anywhere across the country. I personally have never been to a service station anywhere in Australia in all of my travels where you can buy diesel only. Always there is petrol available. Um, that fuel consumption now it's really not an issue, petrol versus diesel. I hope you've enjoyed uh, this first Patriot Garage. Yes, it's gonna be a little bit techy. You're not gonna get the entertainment out of it um, that you will out of the typical Patriot games, but this is really informative. We're just handing over what we've learned, what we know, make your own decisions, do your research when it comes to building or buying. Um, one of these touring cars, whether it's a super tour, you want to build your own, you like Pecor, you like another brand, this just gives you our opinion, gives you a bit of background as to why we've developed these products, why we use the brands that we use, and more importantly, why we choose, and we do, we choose the vehicles, you know, we don't get given cars. So, you know, for us, we put our hard money into it as well. Um, so when we make the decision on the base platform of what we're going to use, we consider all of these things. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I can tell you in this instance, this has been one of the best investments that we've ever made. Um, and we're looking forward to what Ram do here in Australia in the future. Stay tuned for the next episode of Patriot Garage.